let me give you a bit of information about me before I go into this story. I was living in New Zealand, 23 years old. My birthday is on New Year's Day and I am now 28. We have a festival in the south of the North Island where you camp, get drunk, and whatnot. And it can last up to seven days. Anyways, this was probably around New Year's Eve. So people had been up for days and I had woken up early and decided to have a shower before everyone woke up and used all the hot water. I took all my belongings that I needed and walked first to the toilet. These ones were some up the stairs in a portable building. They were sectioned for boys and girls. As I walk up the stairs, I heard someone call me out. I looked around and saw a guy walking towards me. I stopped, because I thought maybe he wanted me to ask a question about camping grounds or something. He came up to me and said, hey, what's your name? And proceeded to hold his hand out to shake mine. I was like, oh, hey, and shook his hand. I thought this was weird, as I was part way up the stairs, and when I went to pull my hand away, he held it on and then said, can I get your phone number? I ripped my hand out of his and gave him a look that said, yeah, fucking right, mate, and laughed. He looked offended, so I said, it's 6 a.m. and you introduce yourself to me while I'm on my way to the toilet. I'm not giving you my phone number. He shrugged and went on his way, or so I thought. When I had finished using the toilet, I came out the door and briefly looked up where I noticed him crouched behind a tree. He didn't seem to see me, so I kept it that way to scope out what he was doing. As I was walking to the shower in the corner of my eye, I noticed him run from behind a tree to behind a building they used to sell food that was closer to me. I was shitting my pants at this point, and the stairs to the shower were behind the building so I walked that way and instead of going up the stairs to enter the showers, I ran and hide. Then I saw him run around the building and went up the stairs. I bolted. I was so angry and scared at this point. I kept running until I found some poor hungover boy who was sweeping his guts out and told him what happened and ask if I could just stand with him for a bit. Not that he would have been much help if that guy come looking for me, but the company was nice. After a bit, I calmed down and decided to look for security, as I didn't want anyone else going through this. So I thanked the boy for his company, and found one of the duty security officers. As we searched the campgrounds, there was a hilly part that blocked one section from the other. We walked over it and found two boys, picking up anything they can find to throw at tents, and lo and behold, he was one of them. I notified the security officer that that was him, and then noped the fuck out of there. I later heard that they kicked him out, out of the festival. I attended what was expected to be a super fun party ringing in 2015 at a close friend's home. I expected to be awake until dawn, so I made sure to eat a big dinner and arrived late to the party at around 11pm with some of my two best friends. We were pretty tight knit social group and despite the party being a combination house show with several bands playing, I knew virtually all of the 60 or so people who were already there when I arrived. Among friends and acquaintances, everyone was celebrating, drinking, and having a great time. I had planned to meet up with some other friends at around 2am when they were done bartending in a public event. So I was drinking socially, but in moderation. I'm no stranger to the sauce, and I have a healthy tolerance. By midnight, the party had grown to at least a hundred people and by this time, there were people drifting in from neighborhooding parties and surrounding university areas. Despite attempts to limit attendees who we actually knew, I opened my third beard at 1am and continued taking photos, snaps, and messaging other friends who were not there. Around 1.30am, I started to feel really drunk and thinking that perhaps I was just overwhelmed by the constant activity around me. 
I stepped into the mostly empty living room for a breather and to message my friend. I sent her a message inviting her to the party as we plan on to meet up. As I finished my message, I felt someone come up behind me. He pressed his body against me as he grabbed my hip. As I straightened up, I could feel him bending down, slightly to whisper into my ear. But it wasn't a whisper. He clearly said to me, In a few minutes, you aren't going to remember anything. And then, I'm going to rape the shit out of you. I froze. It hit me. I wasn't feeling really drunk. The confusion I had attributed to social anxiety or the large crowd I was experiencing because I had been drugged. I knew I had only moments to prevent the inedible. I ran from him best as I could and didn't turn around. I wanted to retrieve my purse and jacket and started calling the two people I meant to meet up at 2am. I was so out of it. I was having a hard time communicating what was happening and I started crying, moving throughout the house and trying to find someone I could explain it to. I was too disoriented. Thankfully, friend one was able to leave from bartendering early and came to get me. He called me and as I ran outside, the creepy guy literally chased me. I got to my friend's car and as I started to black out, he said that the creepy guy was trying to wave him down, shouting to him that he was my friend and he was going to take me home. Friend one told me that I just kept saying, drive, drive, and he took me home where we met up with friend 2 who was bartendering the event. At 2.30 a.m. I lost consciousness and remained unconscious for five and a half hours. They were shaking me, trying to get some kind of reaction. Nothing. I didn't respond in any way. They sat up with me throughout the night to make sure I was okay. At around 7 a.m. I somehow managed to get up and climbed into my bed. At 9 a.m. I woke with a start and had no idea where I was. I was so relieved to discover that I was safely at home. I was high for a total of 20 hours and didn't feel normal again for several days. I don't think I'll ever know who drugged me. And I only have Roach a description to work from. I was home for the holidays from college, and my friend Sarah invited me to go to Palm Springs to celebrate the New Year's with her mom and our friend Rachel. I didn't have any other plans, so I decided to go with them. We went to a cool looking city from about an hour from where we live that is big on shopping and resorts. We planned to have a pretty calm night. We watched a ball drop at the block party thing downtown, and we had a few drinks at a bar. Since we're on the west coast, the ball drops at 9, so at around 8, we venture from our hotel, walking to the block party about a mile away. On the way, we pass by a very lively bar, so we decide to stop by and spend 15 minutes dancing, but didn't get any drinks. It was a gay bar, and Sarah and Rachel being gay, they were stoked on it and wanted to come after the ball drop, even though it was 90% men there. We continued to the block party, get some dinner and a glass of champagne. The ball dropped and they had a DJ, so we spent about an hour dancing there. After we got tired of it, we decided to head back to the bar and hang out there until midnight. Once we got there, Sarah's mom pays for a drink for each of us, but leaves soon after that because she was tired. It's about 10.30 at this point and Sarah and Rachel and I are enjoying drinks and having fun dancing. Rachel tried some of my drink, since it was one she hadn't had before. I constantly had my guard up when drinking in public, and I felt safe at this bar because it's 90% gay men who I thought would not have any interest in me. I went back to the bar and get a second drink, and that's the last thing I remember. The rest I have gathered from Sarah and Rachel. Almost immediately after getting my second drink, I asked Rachel to go to the bathroom with me because I wasn't feeling well, even though I was completely fine 10 minutes before. Rachel, now worried, somehow drags my half-lifeless body out to where Sarah was waiting for us. 
Security, seeing my condition and assume I was wasted, asked for us to leave. Sarah and Rachel decided me to take back to the hotel, about a half a mile away. By this point, I was unconscious and there were barely sounds escaping from my mouth. They saw someone leave the bar at the same time as us, who was walking near us. But they were preoccupied with trying to keep my lifeless body off the ground. At one point, I threw up all over myself, the both of them, the sidewalk, etc. The next part of the story we had to get from Sarah and Rachel doesn't have a memory of this. Still struggling to carry me, the man they saw left the bar and approached them. He was hitting on Rachel, trying to get her to go grab a drink with him. She was very agitated and told him to leave because her friend needed her help right now. He didn't take no for an answer and continued to follow us down the street, asking if they want to get drinks with him, if he can help carry me and such. A middle-aged woman witnessed this whole come up and told the man off. Something along the lines of, stop harassing these young women, or I'm going to call the police. He left after that. By some miracle, an EMT and his wife enjoying the holiday ran into us on the street. He checked me out to make sure something wasn't majorly wrong, and then carried me the rest of the way to my hotel and into my room since my friends could barely hold me up. They thanked him profusely and him and his wife left. This is where Rachel's memory kicks back in. Five minutes later, they get a knock on the door, and it's the EMT and his wife again. They came to let us know that a man followed us to the hotel and they just saw him hop the gate and started to make his way to our room. My friends called security hotel, but they were unable to find him. My friends didn't get a glimpse of him, but I'm sure it was the same man from earlier. I spent the rest of the night vomiting everything in my body and dry heavily after that. I woke up the next morning in a pile of pillows and blankets on the bathroom floor. My last memory was at a bar getting a second drink and my friends filled me in on everything that had happened. Feeling like crap, I thought I had drank way too much, but I had never been blacked out in my life and the amount of drinks I had didn't add up to me being completely unconscious. We decided my first drink had to been drugged since Rachel had some of it and had no memory of our walk home even though she was fully functional. I'm sure that the man was talking to Rachel, and then follow us back was the one that slipped something in my drink. To this day, I really don't know how I could have been slipped something. I got my drink from the bar and never set it down. My best guess was that it was already in the cup. Thankfully, I had good friends and kind strangers protecting me that night. It keeps me up at night thinking what could have happened under different circumstances.